I know you've purchased a Tour Striker and it's really going to help your game. The reason this golf club is designed the way it is, it makes a lot of sense just by looking at it that you have to have some forward shaft lean to get that loft to present itself to the golf ball. You have to have a downward strike in order to get that leading edge below the equator of a golf ball. You are going to figure that out on your own. That's the beauty of it. When you hold on to this golf club, it's, it looks different. It's intimidating. The toe has been beveled away. The heel is gone. Everything below the sweet spot has been taken away. I'm not here to punish you. I'm here to make you enjoy or try to help you enjoy your regular golf game better. Today's equipment is so good, it just lets you cheat, cheat, cheat. Why not get on the range with a tool that's designed to make you better? It's not as though it's going to take your game improvement clubs and make you buy a new set of Titleist blades. It's not. It's just going to help you strike the golf ball better. When you make your golf swing and you descend down into impact and you try to get that leading edge as close to the ground as you can, you're going to get your hands ahead of the ball. You're going to get that golf shaft leading forward. You're going to present that long lever that's driven by pivot into the golf ball. And when you do that, you're going to find something interesting. It doesn't happen that fast. It doesn't feel as quick or as out of control as most amateurs swing a golf club. In order to present that nice long lever, you'll do it reasonably slowly. But the beautiful thing, the golf ball feels tremendous pressure and goes very far. It's not about trying to hit it hard. It's about letting the lever put a bunch of pressure into the golf ball and enjoying that ball fly towards your target. You can do it. The Tour Striker is going to help you get there. It's intuitive. It's instinctual. You will become a better player. Well, for all you people that just bought your Tour Striker, let me just help you with a couple of things. Actually, one thing, and this is the only thing you need to know. We're going to have to get this ball in the air by leaning the shaft towards the target. What I try to do is keep that shaft absolutely perpendicular at address. I go back to hit it. I then lean it towards the target. This stores more energy allows me to get the hands ahead, compress the ball by hitting down to get the ball up. The same feeling the Tour Pros got. That's how they do it. They hit down, they compress the ball to get the ball up in the air. You bought the Tour Striker already. That's all you have to do. Practice with this. You'll start to get it. You'll understand how to compress the golf ball and get it in the air. Today I'm going to teach you how to take this golf club and get it on a golf ball to have the impact alignments of the best players in the world. Being a club professional, I teach a lot of club golfers just like yourselves. And in most cases, we don't have positive club ball contact. What most amateur golfers do is this golf club flips past their hands in an attempt to make the golf ball go up. Now I know you've taken lessons from all your club pros out there and it's their well-meaning intention to teach you how to strike down on a golf ball. The trouble is, normal golf clubs let you cheat. The Tour Striker, the way it's designed with its elevated leading edge, it does not. Most golf clubs, all your game improvement clubs, are trying to help you use an ineffective golf swing to get the club up in the air. I believe you can hit it properly with a little bit of practice and a little bit of the right guidance. Why not have great club head ball impact alignments that allow you to have some fun when you play golf? So let's get started with that. A very, very important thing with golf is pivot. It's your core power, how your body rotates away from the target and toward the target. Because we can think of things a lot of different ways, but I could say, are my arms moving? Or are they being moved? Well, clearly, when you move your core properly, your arms are moved by your pivot. Your pivot transfers energy into your arms. Your arms transfer energy into the golf club. See, what happens with most golf clubs is that you, are, you can cheat the golf ball a little bit, you can hit up on the golf ball a little bit and still present a result. Not a great result, not the result that your club champion has or a PGA Tour player or LPGA Tour player. When they hit a golf ball, you can really hear that compression. You can really hear that ball compress in the face and whoosh off in toward the target. So that's what I want to teach you today. You don't have to be a physical specimen. You don't have to be uh, trained at, from an early age to be a golfer. What you have to understand are a few basic components. We're going to get started on those simple components. The first being rotation. I think everybody out there hopefully can physically take their torso 
turn it away from the target, toward it, turn it toward the target. Now, sure, we can all do that with different speed. Obviously, Tiger Woods can do it at high speed, and the rest of us do it somewhere below that. But we can have a good time moving our torso, transporting our arms, thereby transporting the golf club. Now, what does that rotation do for you? Okay, well, I'm going to show you an example. If I take my hands and I hold my arms straight up in front of me, my arms aren't going to move. They're going to be moved by my pivot, and I'm barely holding on to this club. So if I pivot, which is a turn away from the target and a turn toward the target, watch what happens. Okay, so what through that golf club? Clearly, not my hands, my pivot through that golf club. So pivot is a key part of the of meshing of a good golf swing together. Let's talk about some of the other things that are very, very vital. Okay, you can clearly see how the pivot through the golf club. This is a fantastic drill. It's been around for years and years and years. It's one of my favorites on the lesson tee. I get most of my members doing it. It's understanding how the pivot can really transfer momentum into something. So here I have a, my little plane board that I use in a lot of lessons. But most importantly, I've got a, a, just a bath towel. It's a regular bath towel rolled up and folded in half. And what this is going to provide is an important way for you to adapt when using the Tour Striker. So you'll notice, if I take this towel and get my golf posture and just hold on to this towel with my hands and I wave this back and forth, no matter how hard I wave it, I can't put any force into this, into this plane board I use here. But if I pivot, you can see that the throw-up motion really puts some energy into this plane board. In fact, if I pivot with some force, I can go ahead and knock that plane board over. So when you're working with the Tour Striker, why don't you understand that this towel exercise is going to be your go-to feel to learn how to use your pivot correctly. And I'm not telling you how to straighten your legs. I'm not telling you how to you know, move your body a certain way because you're going to adapt to it. You're going to do it on your own. You're going to have your own personal swing signature developed by using the Tour Striker to get great club head ball contact, the great alignments of the best players. Years ago, they didn't need video equipment and lines on screens and highly technical teaching to teach great ball strikers how to hit a golf ball. It happens once you get a few basic concepts, and I know I can help you with that. Your towel from your closet will help you learn how to have a successful pivot. Pivot is one of the key elements. Let's go on to the next one. We're going to talk about lag pressure. That's going to be our second drill, lag pressure. This is how we do it. Okay, now that we've had fun with that towel and knocking over that plane board, you can do that at home with your bath towel and, and your, in a couch or the side of a golf cart or your stand bag. This is a little drill to incorporate to understand club head lag. Really, really vital to understand this as you apply the Tour Striker to a golf ball. In my hand, I've got a grape, okay? This is how I'm going to squish that grape. If I take my golf grip, which we'll have a separate chapter on, and I set this grape gently in between the grip and my index finger right here, you'll notice that I haven't squished any juice out of that grape. Now what happens in a golf swing, in an effective golf swing, the pivot puts some energy into your arms that go around you, and your pivot puts some energy, your, the return pivot puts energy back into your arms on the way down. And it's that energy on the way down that squishes that grape. Now that grape, the juice clearly bursts out of that, out of its skin on my way down. And how that works, is simple. The golf club puts pressure. You've got the weight at the end of a stick. When we change direction, we need to embrace the fact that we're going to have that pressure build up in our hands. Even though my eyes are on the golf ball at all times, my mind is always in my hands. I'm trying to feel where the club is going to put pressure. When that pressure is set in, then I allow my pivot to throw that golf club out just like that previous drill of holding the club up horizontal to the ground, pivoting and watching it fly out. The only difference being that I don't let go of it. That's the freedom needed. That's how leg pressure actually gets stored, energy gets stored, and it eventually throws itself out. It's really no different than if you're fly fishing. Uh, most, of you, most of you have felt that. When you're throwing a baseball, the same components are in place. When you throw a baseball, 
your elbow leads your wrist, your wrist trails your elbow, and eventually each segment of energy is released. Well, the same holds true in golf. You need to be able to feel that leg pressure, understand it. When we hold on to it at a dress, there's really no leg pressure in place. We're just holding a, we're just holding a golf club. It's when our pivot changes direction that we feel mass in our hands and we let our pivot deliver that mass toward the target. Let me bring in my assistant, Rich, to expand on this thought just a little bit. Come on in, Rich. Okay, we have another trusty grape. We do. Fantastic. Go ahead and assume your regular grip position. What we're trying to feel here, ladies and gentlemen, is if I put this, this grape in Rich's hand, a lot of amateur golfers have a lot of tension right there. That grape is already broken. The juice is running down the shaft. We need to relax. We need to let this pivot power this golf swing. I'm just going to ask you to stand up taller for me. Fantastic. And what we're going to do, I'm going to take your shoulders gently. I'm going to push you forward and back. Now, I guarantee you, we just squeeze that grape. Okay. Now, the reason, what happened was, this club head lagged behind the hands. The trick to this, ladies and gentlemen, is simple. Once we have the prep, simple but elusive. Once we have the pressure, when your mind is feeling this pressure build up in your hands, it's everything we can do to maintain this pressure through impact. We don't want to destroy it. We don't want to throw it away. There's a bunch of reasons why we do destroy it and why we throw it away. We will cover those. And the Tour Striker Training Club is going to help you beat those challenges that most amateur golfers have. Rich, thank you. Good job. A very confusing component most amateurs can't get around is that the only thing that goes straight in a golf swing is the golf ball. The golf ball is a very circular motion. This is a circle on a horizontal plane. Well, the golf swing is a circle on an inclined plane, just like the roof of your house. What you see here is a couple of, a couple of lines, and I only have them there to show you a few basic things. Once you take a golf swing, and you get your hands on properly, as soon as I make a backswing, that swing is going around me in a circle. When I get to the golf ball, that circle touches my target line, and then my follow through, that circle immediately goes around me to the left. When we hit a golf ball, the golf swing is now on an inclined plane. The hands, the club, the head go back up and in, instantly, simultaneously, away from that wall, just as though I was standing with my club head on drywall and I pivoted. Now my club is clearly three feet away from where it started. So when I'm coaching my members at the club, I see a lot of members feel as though they have to take the club head and in order to hit straight shots, make the club head go down the target line. What happens if you try to do that? You ruin the beauty of rotation, what Mother Nature gives you, because you interrupt that natural rotary flow. And not only that, you introduce something that's off balance. If I take this club in this elevated position, and I try to keep it on this line, on this plane board that I use, and I go down, you can clearly see my balance center is going forward and toward my toes. So it's really, really important to understand path. Hand path, club head path, body rotation. The hands, just like the club, they work back up and in, down, out, and forward, and back up and in. It's really a mirror image, the backswing back to impact to the downswing. Now let me hit a shot and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I just hit a nice shot on my target line. The key with that though, is I want you all to understand that the only thing that went straight was the golf ball. The club head went around my body in a circle path, back toward the ball, back up around me to my left. Now, most of you are probably gonna go right on past this grip segment, but I hope you take a moment and watch this. Out of all the lessons I give at the club level, I'd say eight out of 10 of you need a minor grip enhancement. 
So I'm going to go over some pretty detailed stuff about the golf grip and I want you to pay attention to it solely for the fact that you might pick up a little something that will provide you a little bit more feedback on how to strike the golf ball a little bit better. So first off, let's address your left hand. For you lefties out there, I apologize, but you're really good at flipping things around. So I'm going to do this for the right-handed golfer. The left hand hold. It's important that when we build a grip, we build it for impact alignment when the club head meets the golf ball. That alignment is crucial. It's really fundamental to why and how the Tour Striker came about. The alignment we're looking for is when this shaft basically hides underneath the, my, my left forearm. You can see that if I hold this in a mid-body position where the club is pointing at my belly button, there's an angle between my left wrist and my left forearm. When I take this shaft and I put it underneath my left forearm, now that becomes a lever, a long lever. That's our goal of impact. That's why it's very, very important that when we grip a golf club, we grip it based on this alignment. So when you're learning how to grip a club, it's not about simply setting a golf ball in front of you, setting the golf club and randomly putting our hands on it. There's really a method to it, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We grip the golf club, we grip it for the impact condition when the club head meets the golf ball. And you'll notice with the Tour Striker, if I take the Tour Striker from a vertical position and I lean it forward into the impact condition, I'm taking that elevated leading edge. When I lean it forward, that leading edge gets closer to the ground. Well, that's what presents the loft to the golf ball. That's why learning how to grip the club in the impact alignment is vital. So when we grip a golf club, we learn how to do it with a forward shaft lean and a left hand that's got the heel pad on top of the grip. Now I'm going to explain that to you because it's really important as well. If I take the last three fingers of my left hand off the golf club and bounce it up and down, you'll see here that it's getting held up by my heel pad. Now it's really important to know the difference between your heel pad and your thumb pad. I don't want to see the grip fall underneath the thumb pad. So if you can do this effectively, you can take the club and you can bounce it all day underneath the heel pad of your left hand. So from there, if you wrap the last three fingers, now you've got a successful left hand grip. And then go ahead and undo your index and thumb and then redo it just for comfort. From this position, you should have those grooves on that club straight up and down. So this is an address alignment. This is your impact alignment. I put my hand on in a comfortable position in impact. I bring it back to my address alignment. Big difference between address and impact. We'll go over that in just a moment. So the right hand grip, very, very important. This position, the two middle fingers, hook them into a little J, okay? You want to get these two little fingers into a little J, and from this position, put them on the grip. And then to get the orientation correct of your right hand, you'll want to take your right hand and point your index finger somewhat down the shaft. Now, I really don't care if you use a 10 finger grip, if you use an interlocking grip, Tiger and Nicholas use that, or you use the varding grip where the pinky kind of lies between the index finger and the middle finger of your left hand. A lot of great players have played golf with a lot of different grips. It really doesn't matter. My preference would be the varden grip if you're just simply starting to play golf right now. So you're going to take your right hand, you're going to make that little J, you're going to get that J on the shaft, and you're going to change the orientation of that right hand by taking your index finger and pointing it down the shaft, and then bring those hands together. Once you do that, Go ahead and come back and take a look at that club face. If those grooves are still vertical at 12 o'clock straight up and down, you've got a good address hand location. That's a very good way to have a, a sound grip, how to put your hands in the club. The reason for having a sound grip, when you take this club and you put it into motion, that club face has a relationship with the back of your left forearm. A lot of amateurs, I'm willing to bet any of you slicers out there, and you know who you are, when you get to the top, you're going to see that club face. It's going to be what we call, it has toe hang. That toe hangs on this side of the plane of my left arm in this position. It's really hard to take this golf club in that open position back to a golf ball. You'll do all kinds of funky little accommodations to try to get that open face onto a golf ball. So it's really vital if you spend some time on your grip to get your hands organized and on properly. If we zoom in on this and we look at it really closely, we're going to see that our address hand location 
has a bent left wrist and a flat right wrist. Our impact hand location, however, once we do a little work with our pivot, we load up that shaft, we bring this back into impact, we're going to see the exact opposite, a flat left wrist and a bent right wrist. When you watch some of this tape and you see some slow-mos, you're going to see a big difference from my address hand location to my impact hand location. That's really the premise of the Tour Striker. How do I get that elevated leading edge closer to the ground? I can't do it if I start at address and try to return to address. I can only do it if I start at address and get to my impact hand location. That's why it's imperative that you learn how to put your hands on in the impact condition with the shaft up your left arm. You can see it's hiding under my left forearm, or if anything, you can see it poking out on the left side of my left arm. Then bring that back to a point of comfort, which will orientate your hands differently. That's how you get your hands in the golf club correctly. I'm going to ask my assistant, Rich, to come on in here and hit a shot, and we can work together on this. Okay, what you're looking at here is Rich has a great address hand location. Gently bent left wrist, nice and flat right wrist. Go ahead, Rich. Very nice. Okay, come on back to address for a second here. So when Rich looks down from his eyeballs and he looks through the grip of his hands, he's going to be able to see his hands situated on his left instep, just inside his left foot. If we take Rich to impact and his pivot is delivering this golf club into a golf ball, from his visual perspective, his hands are now significantly forward of where they were at address. See, this is a great impact position right here. We've got the nice flat left wrist, bent right wrist. We've got weight into the left heel, and the weight's coming off our right foot. See, the interesting thing about how this is working here is Rich has, he's never going to fall, hit fire and fall back and have his weight on his right-hand side because he has the right intent on how to strike the golf ball. Let's discuss the power moves in golf and how you are going to really lever and strike that golf ball really, really hard. Go ahead and take your address for me, comfortable address. Now, you understood in that last, one of the last segments there when we squeeze the grape, that when we transition from backswing to forward swing, go ahead and make a little move forward for me, that there is some mass that fights against your hands, okay? Your mind, you have to be aware of that mass. There's some great old footage of some of the um, older players, and you can really see how this golf club rests and sits into their hands as their pivot starts to go the other way. Now, in Rich's case, you can see his left knee working a little bit toward the target. These are just things that he does instinctively as an accomplished player. What I want you to feel, much like when you're doing that towel drill, that pivot exercise, is you want to be able to do some work on your pivot. And you can notice when I do this, the club head's the last thing to move because this motion comes from the core. The last thing to move is a club head on the way back, and it's the last thing to move on the way down because the core is really where the power source is. It's not in your hands. Your hands can have some supplemental addition to power, but really your core energy is going to be a subtle weight shift to your right, a little seating move on the way down, and then a burst off the ground. And you can all do this. Powerful moves like Rich's have reciprocating motion, which simply means, Rich, go ahead and take it to the top and stop. That's what they don't do. When you look at Rich's swing in, in true motion, full speed, this gets to the top, but there's stuff going on. He's anticipating. He's letting his arms put some pressure into his body. His, his, therefore, the arms put pressure into the club, and this whole unit swings down pretty much with abandon into the golf ball. Now, you can't do that if you don't know how to use the tool properly. That's what the Tour Striker is for. It's to intuitively teach you how to use the golf club, the tool properly. Because if you're always standing there and you want to try to elevate the golf ball, there's no way you're going to lever 
you're going to let your body get into the correct positions to put pressure down into that golf ball, which thereby takes you to your left side into a nice finish. Okay, to summarize a, a good efficient golf swing, efficient golf swings have a reciprocating motion. That means it's not a swing that goes back and stops and a swing that goes down. It's a continuous golf swing. A golf swing has a component working back as we have a component working down and one that's about to pivot. When you watch Rich hit a golf shot, he's an accomplished player with an effective pivot. He hits shots a long way on his intended line. That's not something you do by trying to be careful. It's not something you do by swinging easy. Swinging easy is nothing more than having all your segments in the correct positions. I guarantee you Freddie Couples, the easiest swinger of them all, doesn't swing easy. He, the golf ball thinks he's swinging really, really hard. It just looks easy because he's got beautiful rhythm, beautiful tempo, but he's got a wonderful reciprocating swing. His golf swing's working back, there's pressure being put in the system, and the rotation adds to that pressure and that's sustained through impact and then it, dis it, then it dissipates as it goes into its finish. Okay, what I've got on the ground here, I've got two dowels just representing four quadrants. In golf, we basically stand in two of those quadrants and we play golf in one of those quadrants. There's a quadrant that we should leave alone and it's everything to the right behind the golf ball. If I stand in here and I've got my grip position that I've built being conscious of impact, take it to an address hand location, from my visual perspective, what I see looking down through this shaft is this shaft is perpendicular with the one on the ground. It may not be the case, but I don't really care. This is my comfortable place for me to relax in my address alignment. Now what I want you to be able to do, and I just have a pitching wedge here, is to be able to make little swings letting that club land in the left quadrant in front of your left toe. I'm not taking big divots, but I am taking, letting this lever store by my rotating pivot, letting this shoot out into the left quadrant. Now, if it scares you to have something down like this, you can easily just put some shafts down, make little impressions in the grass and do the same little drill. But what's really important is that we know that in golf, we stand in two quadrants, we play golf in a quadrant, and then we disregard one completely. So if I put a golf ball a safe distance in front of this dowel, and I hit a shot, and I've even got, I've got plenty of room right there. If I hit this shot, You can clearly see that I didn't hit this dowel on my downswing. I wasn't trying to help that golf ball up in the air. That's the purpose of the tour striker, so that you learn how to present the loft of the club to the ball correctly, not try to help. If I would have tried to help that golf ball up in the air, you would have saw something that would have destroyed this dowel relationship on the ground. In summary, knowing where the bottom of your swing is is very, very important and it's something that you keenly have to be aware of when you practice. This little quadrant exercise is fantastic. You can also do this simply in a fairway bunker, which is it, you can't hurt yourself, and it's one of my favorite drills. Knowing where the bottom of your swing is is vital. And to let this golf club lever and hit the ground in front of your left toe is really important because most amateur golfers think that the golf club starts at their ball position and returns to the ball position. The reality is the golf club is working down through the golf ball and the actual low point of your golf swing is really somewhere underneath your left shoulder. So ball position and impact are really two different places as discussed when we're learning how to put our hands on the club properly. Use the quadrant drill. Understand that you stand in two quadrants, you play golf in one quadrant and hopefully you disregard that other quadrant. Okay, let's get down to it. How are you going to play your best golf? Well, the Tour Striker, by its design, is going to teach you how to have forward shaft lean, give you the leverage to provide power so you hit the ball farther. Coupled with that, you can see we've relieved the toe and we've relieved the heel. That's face control. 
Now there's a couple little drills that are going to help you understand face control. Like why didn't I talk about this first? Well, there's a process here and the process is this. You have to have your pivot in place. You have to understand lag and once you understand lag, now you can start to understand face control. So I've got my friend the grape. Delicious grapes by the way, they must be in season. And what we're going to do here as you could see, when I change direction, I'm not going to pop this grape quite yet, but when I change direction with any momentum, the mass of the club puts pressure into my hands. Now I'm going to really, really focus, even though I'm looking at the golf ball, on keeping that pressure in my hands as I pivot through the golf ball. Now this is a tricky part that's going to require you to do some minor adjustments, and you might go to your local PGA Pro to help with this, that once you learn how to pivot, once you learn how to have leg pressure, now you need to understand how that face works. I'm going to do a little bit to show you right now, but it takes a little bit of work on your part, so I'm going to throw this back at you as your homework. A lot of players, depending on their style of pivot, might play with a shut club face, in relation, that club face is pointing to the sky in relationship to my left, back of my left hand, my flat left wrist, or they might play with a little bit of toe down. Now, whether they play with whatever degree a variance in this position right here. Very skilled players have the ability from that differing degree to bring that down to impact into an impact alignment, club head to ball contact, that allows the ball to leave the face on its intended starting line. You can't do that consistently unless you understand pivot, which is your towel drill. You can't do that consistently unless you understand lag, the combination of towel drill and understanding how the mass of this club head squishes this grape in transition. So, I can do a lot of things wonderfully. I'm going to put this little grape in my pocket. Hopefully I don't squish it because I'm going to refer to it in a second. I can make a great golf swing. I can have a club face that has no relation to my target line. I can make a beautiful swing and I don't think the camera could pick that up, but I hit that 45 degrees off to the right. A lot of you golfers do that. Here's what we need to understand. In order to have face control, the face is in essence the back of the left wrist. Whatever my left wrist does, the face will do. If I cup it, I add loft to that face. If I bow it, I de-loft that face. If I rotate this clockwise, I open it counterclockwise, I close it. So you have to have the understanding that the left wrist is club face control. The grape in your right hand is leg control. It's leg first, club face second. So once you understand how your pivot can squish this grape, oh, there goes that grape. Once you understand how to maintain that lagging club on your hands, and you know that the left wrist controls the face, now we can start to understand the relationship with ball flight. Okay, so club face control is really understanding and monitoring your left wrist. When your left wrist is working down into impact, it's imperative that you have a nice flat left wrist. That can only be flat if you have a nice lagging golf club. So the two work hand in hand. If that left wrist gets to the golf ball facing off to the right, your golf ball is going to go to the right. If you get that left wrist facing a little bit to the left, your golf ball is going to go to the left. So left wrist is club face control, leg pressure, right hand is club head control. Training those two elements are vital for you to play great golf. I want to sincerely thank you for watching this DVD and thank you for using the Tour Striker Training Club. I know that with a little practice and some new understanding that this club provides, you're really going to strike the golf ball better and enjoy golf a whole lot more. And special thanks to Tethro Golf Club for letting me shoot this DVD out here. It's a fantastic facility. I love working here and I hope you can come see me out here someday. If you have questions about Tour Strike or other Tour Striker products, please visit TourStriker.com. We'd love to answer your questions. There's some great video tips and some supplemental things on there for you. So come visit us. We look forward to seeing you in the future.